All right, Shalom. This is the Brother Bonawal coming back at you with another lesson. Lord willing to exhort and edify the elect of Yahweh Bashem Yahusha, giving all praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahusha, Bashem Rakakudash. Double honors to the elders and apostles. As always, peace, love, mercy, and grace to the Lord's elect scattered abroad to you and your houses. I say Shalom and may you endure the times to come. All right, and I want to go into 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter. Which is the story of David and Goliath, you know, very uh, popular story, very famous story, but it's um, very, um, you know, kind of slept on, man. People really, really sleep on what, what happened here, man. It, it, you know, and, and this is one of the, you know, uh, reasons people think that the Bible is just a, a fairy tale, but they really don't uh, respect it as, as real history, you know what I'm saying? And when this is actually a recorded event that happened, where you had a giant heathen that came against a little boy, and him thinking he was gonna, you know, devour this little boy and, you know, have his way with him, um, he he was he was uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, he was in for a rude awakening, you know what I'm saying? Because the, the Lord was with this little boy that he fought, and this little boy was, you know, King David, man, you know, who was a young man. At the time, but he was very confident and um, persuaded that uh, the Lord would defend him and, and fight that battle for him. And, and and we can learn, you know, from that story because, you know, all throughout history, it was really the Lord that was with us, man. It's you know these battles are not our battles, you know. That's why I tell you that the Lord is a man of war in in uh, Exodus. All right, and, and the Lord is the one that that's gonna. St you know, that's why it says in Zephaniah, the third chapter, I believe, um, wait upon me till I rise to the prey. Okay, because the Lord is going to, you know, defend us. He's going to fight for us. This is Exodus, the 14th chapter. All right, Yahweh Shem Yahushai shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. All right, the NLT says the Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. All right, because these battles that, you know, we, we find ourselves in against, these other nations, the Lord put us in those situations. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're helpless. You know, we don't have, especially when it comes down to the Edomites, you know, we can't, uh, even though we're physically, you know, stronger than, than Esau, you know, we can whip his ass one-on-one, -on -one, but when it comes to, um, you know, nation against nation, that ain't no, that ain't a, that ain't smoke that we want, you know what I'm saying? Because his blessing is the sword. So we're going to have to be patient and uh, and wait on the Lord. Let me get that Zephaniah since I mentioned it. This is a Zephaniah 3 and 8. Therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey for my determination, um, which in NLT it says, for I have decided. So this is the Lord's decision. It says, for my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them my indignation. Even all my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Now, this is going into the, the judgment that the Lord is going to pour out on all the nations for what they've done to the apple of his eye, which are the Israelites. And if you don't know by now, the biblical Hebrew Israelites are uh, you Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. All right. You make up the 12 tribes of, of Israel. Right? You're the ones that you're the only ones that fit the description. Okay, so let's go back to 1 Samuel 16. And I'm going to read the New Living Translation. And I'm going to start at 20. It's like it. 1 Samuel 17. I'm going to start at around 24. All right, it says, As soon as the Israelite army saw him, they began to run away in fright. And this is when they saw Goliath because he was he was very tall, man. He was over six feet, over nine feet tall. So like you uh, saying, have you seen the giant? The men ask. He comes out each day to defy Israel. The king has offered a huge reward to anyone who kills him. He would give that man one of his daughters for a wife and the man's entire family would be exempted from paying taxes. David asked the soldier standing nearby, what will a man get for killing this Philistine and ending his defiance of Israel? Who is this pagan Philistine, Philistine anyway uh, that, he, that he is allowed to defy the armies of the living God? All right, David was speaking up for the Lord, man. He's like, who, who is this damn heathen anyway that he, he, can, he can, you know, 
come against the Lord, man. You know, who is this nigga? You know, like uh, in a uh, battle rap, smack, who is this nigga? And these men gave David the same reply. They said, yes, this is that is a reward for killing them. But when David's oldest brother, Eliab, heard David talking to the men, he, he was angry. What are you doing around here anyway? He demanded. What about those few sheep you're supposed to be taking care of? I know you're about pride and deceit. You just want to see the battle. What have I done now, David replied. Let me jump down to 32. Don't worry about this Philistine. David told Saul, I'll go fight him. Woo! Don't be ridiculous, Saul replied. There's no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy. And he's been a man of war since his youth. So, you know, Goliath been out here doing this, man. You you young as hell, man. He, he been doing this since he was your age. You know, but David persisted. I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goats. He said, when a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. I have done this to both lions and bears, and I do it to this pagan Philistine too, for he has defied the armies of the living God, man. Yeah, the Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. You hear that confidence, man? So, you know, David had had confidence. He had, you know, super faith. He had big faith that the Lord was going to deliver him, you know, from, from this mighty giant. He didn't give a damn how tall he was, how big he was, how strong he was. He didn't care about his, his, his history, you know what I'm saying? He said, I get in the ring with him. I don't give a damn if he if he if he is, you know, 50 and 0. You know what I'm saying? I'ma get this one. Saul finally consented. All right, go ahead, he said, and may the Lord be with you. And that's what it was. He had faith that the Lord was with him. He knew that the Lord was with him. 38. Then Saul gave David his own armor, a bronze helmet, and a coat of mail. Saul was up here down like hell, too. David put it on, strapped the sword over it, and took a step or two to see what it was like, for he had never worn such things before. <laughs> I can't go in these. He protested to Saul. I'm not used to them. So David took them off again. He picked up five smooth stones from a stream and put them into his shepherd's bag. Then, armed only with his, his shepherd's staff and sling, he started across the valley to fight the Philistine. Goliath walked out toward David with his shield barrel ahead of him, sneering in contempt at this ruddy-faced boy. Am I a dog? He roared at David, that you come at me with a stick. And he cursed David by the names of his gods. All right, so let me look at a different translation because it sounds like he basically talking shit to our Lord now. You know what I'm saying? That's where you fucked up at. Bible comparison. Yeah, so he cursed David by his God. So now he he, he coming at our, our Lord now. You know what I'm saying? So this is where he fucked up at. Verse 44, come over here and I give your flesh to the birds and wild animals, Goliath yelled. David replied to the Philistine, you come to me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Ooh, yeah. Today the Lord will conquer you, and I will kill you and cut off your head. And then I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. Yeah, because cause, cause now he's talking about, I'm going to do this in the name of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, and then Yahweh Bashem Yahushai's name going to be magnified, man. We know one thing about the Lord is, you know, he like he said with... uh. What that was, uh, Romans in ninth chapter. He said he raised up Pharaoh so that, you know, he could show his power. So the Lord is about, you know, he about that life. He about, you know what I'm saying, bringing down the mighty with the lowly to, to magnify his name and show his power. All right, so, yeah, that's a, that's a banger right there, man. I'm going to read that again. Started 45. That was fire. David replied to the Philistine, you come to me with sword, spear, and javelin. Let's see what a javelin is. A 
A light spear thrown with the hand is used as a weapon. Okay. So 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 David had a little spear. He had a little sword, right? But I come to you in the name of Yahweh of heavens, armies, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied today. Now he about to make that death threat to him. He said today, Yahweh will conquer you and I will kill you and cut off your head. And then I, he prophesied to this man. And then I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and wild animals. And the whole world would know that there is a God in Israel. And everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people, but not with sword and spear. This is the Lord's battle. Mm. So like, yeah. This is the Lord's battle, and he will give you to us. That's right. We, we just brought that out in the 14th chapter of Exodus. Yeah, you shall hold your peace, and the Lord shall fight for you. And that's that's going to happen right in, this, in these scriptures. As Goliath moved closer to attack, David quickly ran out to meet him. Reaching into his shepherd's bag and taking out a hurled stone, he hurled it with his sling and hit the Philistine in the forehead. The stone sank in. <sighs> and sleepiness starting to sink in on me. And Goliath, so like it, and Goliath stumbled and fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone, for he had no sword, man. Ooh, that's fire right there, man. The Lord was his weapon. Then David ran over and pulled Goliath's sword from his sheath. David, you oh man, he about to he about to he about to add insult to injury now. David David ran over and pulled Goliath's sword from his sheath. David used it to kill him and cut off his head. When oh yeah, bringing it to pass. When the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they turned and ran. Who else wants some? Who else wants some of Debo? <laughs> then the men of Israel and Ju Judah. Gave a great shout of triumph and rushed after the Philistines, chasing them as far as Gath and the gates of Ekron. The bodies of the dead and wounded Philistines were strewn all along the road from Sharim as far as Gath and Ekron. Then the Israelite army returned and plundered in the deserted Philistine camp. David took the Philistines' head to Jerusalem, but he stored the man's armor in his own tent. Jump over to 57. As soon as David returned from killing Goliath, Ab Abner brought him to Saul with the Philistine's head still in his hand. Tell me about your father, young man, Saul said. And David replied, his name is Jesse and we live in Bethlehem. <laughs> All right, so the Lord was with King David. Um, this is before he was king, but he was with young, young David at the time. And this goes to show you that the Lord is uh he with his people man and he not with the other nations because the philistines if i'm not mistaken they would they would descend from ham all right so you know the lord ain't with the the, the descendants of ham and the descendants of you know these other nations man he's only with this one lineage just one nation of people those israelites man abraham isaac and jacob that's whom he made the promises with that he would never forsake that seed all right, so the Lord don't don't care about you other nations, man. I'm sorry. I know you've been told that, you know, God loves everybody. You know, we're all one. When when that's not what the Bible says, man, because the, the 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 God of the Bible, too many times has been with the slaying and the destruction of the the heathen nations. All right, because uh, like the Lord said, uh, Amos three and two, ye only have I known of all the nations. Look at that. Now now it ain't. The content is unavailable, right? The Lord said, I mean, yeah, the Lord said, ye only have I known of all the nations. So the Lord only knows the Israelites. Yeah. Amos 3 and 2, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities, which is why we've the only one that's, that's received that punishment as, as much as we have, because he's not, he's not interested in other nations. He going to get them for what they did to us, but he getting us for what we did to him, all right? So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, and end there. Lord willing, that was at a fine, you know what I'm saying? Just just hang in there, man, because the Lord, he about to fight for us again because right now we're spiritually going up against Goliath. We're going against the sword himself. All right, Esau is the sword of the Most High. 
This is a prayer of David. All right. Psalm chapter 17. Start at eight. Keep me as the apple of the eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings from the wicked that oppress me from my deadly enemies who compass me about. They are enclosed in their own fat. With their mouth, they speak proudly. All right, who, who does that sound like? They have now compassed us in our steps. They have set their eyes bound down the earth to the earth. Like as a lion that is greedy of his prey, and as it is were a young lion lurking in secret places. Arise, O Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shai, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. All right, NLT says, Arise, O Lord, stand against them and bring them to their knees. Rescue me from the wicked with your sword. Now, we know that the, the the wicked is Esau Edom, but it said this which is thy sword because the Most High uses Esau on the left hand side to uh, chastise and bring judgment against the Israelites. All right, Romans chapter thirteen verse one: Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of the Most High. The powers that be are ordained of the Most High, Most High, Salakia. And we are under oppression from the powers that the Most High has ordained, you see? Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of the Most High, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Okay? I'm going to jump up to verse 4. For he is the minister of the Most High to thee for good. Look at this, NLT, the authorities are God's servants. See, the Most High controls the, 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 the people that's in power, that's oppressing us, the Most High control them too. The authorities are the Most High servant, sent for your good. But if you are doing wrong, of course you should be afraid, for they have the power to punish you. They are, hey, and that's why Jake always getting his ass murked when he get pulled over by police, man. That's why you see all these Jakes getting into all these uh, incidences with these police officers because they, they're resisting the powers of the most. This scripture speaks every time that happens. This scripture comes out because they're resisting the most high's, you know, power, the powers that are ordained to the most high. It says they are God's servants sent for the very purpose of punishing those who do what is wrong. All right, so Yah Bashem Yah Shai got people on this earth that are, you know, they're here to basically be a rod of correction on Jake. So when Jake get to acting up and wilding out, guess what? The Lord might send, send police after you, you know what I'm saying? You riding on the interstate, you know, or you 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 riding through, through a neighborhood, you know, smoking weed, music on 12, you know, and it only go up to 10. Next thing you know, you see them sirens, you know what I'm saying? Cause you, you the, the Lord is uh, is punishing you, man. You know, you gotta be spiritual, man. This this whole thing is spiritual, man. This this is a spiritual battle. This ain't, this isn't carnal. Because when you look at it from uh, f from the flesh, it, it don't make sense. You know, it only makes sense when you look at this thing in the spirit. You know, it it, it makes total sense, man. Hey, this might be a good chapter to go into later. But, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and end that, man, Lord willing. That was edifying.